فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We were in the tafsir of Surah Al-Nazi'at We stopped at the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يَقُولُونَ they say and they are persistent in saying أَإِنَّا لَمَرْدُودُونَ فِي الْحَافِرَةِ Will we indeed be returned to our former self and how we were before? This ayah, those who've rejected the resurrection, who don't believe that they're going to be resurrected, this is the statement that they say. They say, are we going to be brought back to how we used to be? This is the question that they asked. But the ayah is very powerful in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it. First of all, Allah says, يَقُولُونَ They say, أَإِنَّا And the word أَإِنَّا, the alif in the word أَإِنَّا, this alif is alif al-istifham. It's question. Are we? And the reason why it came in this form is min babi ta'ajjub, fascination. They're trying to be fascinated. Allah didn't make it in a, con in a sentence where it's just affirmation. Rather, it's in a form of istifham questioning. Meaning they are trying to say that they are fascinated that resurrection can take place. So they're trying to make it seem like as though it is impossible for resurrection to take place. But Allah also uses the word وَيَقُولُونَ They say And the word يَقُولُونَ is this verb is a fi'l mudari' It's a present verb. And what does it benefit us? It benefits us تَجَدُّدُ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ This event, it happened many occasions. So it wasn't just that they asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this took place once. But it was something that they always used to bring forward. Now today when you look at atheists and you look at the kuffar, when they speak, they like to use this method. And a Muslim shouldn't be fascinated when, they, when he sees the kuffar speak the way that they speak. When you see the heads of atheists today, the way they try to put their shubhas and their doubts forward, we will just say this is tashabahat qulubuhum. Their hearts are the same. The shaitan that sent revelation to the kuffar of Quraysh is the one that's sending it to these atheists and these Christians. It's the same shaitan. So they played that same game even at then. The word hafira in the Arabic language, it means al mar'i, the person to come back on the exact path which he left. It doesn't mean that you came back on another way. It means, hafira means when you walk forward, if you walk back on your footsteps, this is called hafira in the Arabic language. So what they're trying to say is that are we going to be exactly brought, be brought back to how we were? As for the ulama of tafsir, the scholars of tafsir, they differed amongst themselves what is meant by hafira. And there's three views that they held. The first view is life after death. Yaquluna, they say, Inna, are we going to be brought back after we have died? That's one view. This view is attributed to Abdullah ibn Abbas authentically. And it's also attributed to Qatada, two people. Ibn Abbas and Qatada. The second view, I mean the second statement is Al-Ard, the earth. Once the earth has taken us in and the earth has swallowed us, are we going to be brought back? This view is attributed to Mujahid ibn Jabrin. And the difference between the first view and the second view is only wordings. It's ikhtilafu fil alfaz. Difference in terms of wordings. And it's a difference which is ikhtilafu tanawu. It's difference of wording. The, the reality is nothing. The third view is an-nar. Fire. This is the weakest of the, of the three. And it's attributed to Ibn Zayd. And it's a view which is weak because the context of the surah doesn't allow that. So we won't go into the explanation of it. 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, أَإِذَا كُنَّا عِظَامًا نَخِرًا Even, the kuffar are still saying, even if we should be decayed bones, even if we become decayed bones, is Allah still going to bring us back? This is what they say to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's two views regarding what this verse means. One view is the call of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Ibn Abbas said, what they're trying to say is once we have gone, are we going to be brought back? That's one. And we've perished. We've become, we've become decayed bones and the earth has swallowed us. Are we going to be brought back? The other one is before we become decayed bones, when we die and we become empty inside. Because the word nakhira, there's two qira'ah on it. There's two recitations. The first recitation is biduri alif, is nakhira. And the second qira'ah is, does anyone know? The first one is with the alif. And the second one is, and nakhira. Which is ala wazni fa'il. The one that comes as nakhira, it means decayed bones. But when it comes in the recitation of an nakhira, it means that we become empty inside where the wind would go through us. So Ibn Abbas took one of the qira as a the meaning, and the other qawl qatada took, which basically means once we've become dead. Decayed bones, or even the nafs has been taken out of us. So the first one is, once the earth has swallowed us and eaten us, and we're gone. And the second one is, before the earth has eaten us, whilst our body is still intact, our soul is gone, we're dead. Like in our body is still there, and the wind is passing through us, because we become empty now, there's no ruh in us. Are we going to be brought back? It comes to the same point. So the kuffar, they refuse to accept that, that they're going to be brought back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَالُوا تِلْكَ إِذًا كَرَّةٌ خَاسِرَةٌ This is where they mock. Then they say, تِلْكَ إِذًا كَرَّةٌ خَاسِرَةٌ If we are going to be brought back, and it does, this concept of resurrection does actually exist, then definitely if we're brought back, we're going to be in a state of loss. Trying to mock. And you hear them today, they will say, well, let God come burn me if he wants to. Or I want to go to the hellfire. Sah? They will say that, atheists and kuffar and the malahida. And the disbelievers, they mock, they say this. And this statement I've said is the, 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 the tafsir of Qatada ibn Da'amat al-Sadusi. Brothers, every tafsir of every ayah that I give, I will say to you who said it from the Mufassirin. And it's important that we mention the tafsir who a'imma said it, exactly like that. Qatada rahimahullah is the one who said إن الرجعة إلى الحياة بعد الممات رجعة لا خير فيها بل فيها غبن لهم That they are saying this because they are trying to mock the concept of whether they're going to be brought back. So they said if it happens that God even gets the ability to bring us back then we're truly going to be in a state of loss. Allah responds to them and he says to them فإنما هي ججرة واحدة The word فإنما هي it means of course, indeed, it will only be one shout. To, for you to be brought back is only going to be one shout. What does that one shout mean? It means when Israfil blows the second trumpet, Allah won't have to do much. He will just blow, uh, Israfil will just blow, blow, and you'll be brought back. That's easy. It will happen. Don't worry about that. Kafir, don't worry. You will be resurrected and you'll be brought back to life. And it's as simple as a trumpet being blown. فَإِنَّمَا It is nothing more than زَجْرَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ زَجْرَةٌ here means what? A نَفْخَةٌ wahida. One time the blowing of the trumpet. The one time of the blowing of the, the trumpet. <coughs> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says فَإِذَا هُمْ بِالسَّاهِرَةٌ that one time Israfil blows the trumpet. Because Allah says to us, 
فإذا نفخ في الصور فصعق من في السماوات ومن في الأرض إلا من شاء الله ثم نفخ فيه أخرى فإذا هم فإذا هم قيام ينظرون the first time everybody dies and the second one what happens the second trumpet that is blown everybody is, the nafs is being brought back to everybody they come back to life that trumpet is what you're going to come through with Allah says when that trumpet happens you're going to give be given life فإذا هم بالساهرة ما معنى الساهرة ساهرة the مفسرين they differed in two views the first view is that you're going to be on this earth straight away as soon as the trumpet is blown nafs is brought back to you فإذا هم بالساهرة straight away suddenly you're going to just come out of your grave and you're going to be on the surface of this earth this is the first view that your sahira here means ay al ard the earth that once the earth the trumpet is blown and the nafs is put into you you will just come out of the grave and you will be on the surface straight away it won't be any longer you won't stay spend more time there that view is attributed to nine of the a'immah al mufassirin Ibn Abbas, Ikrima, Ammar, Ibn Abi Hafsa, Hassan Ibn Hassan al-Basri, Rahimahullah, Mujahid Ibn Jabrin, Qatad Ibn Da'amat al-Sadusi, Sa'id Ibn Jubayrin, Dahak Ibn Muzahim, and Ibn Zaydin. Those nine, they said that the Ard. The second view is, it's not the Ard, all of it, but it's specifically that the person will come out on the surface of the day of Hashar. The day of resurrection. It's a specific land. It's not every land. Everybody will come out on the Ardul Mahshar. This is a view held by Sufyan al Thawri, Uthman ibn Abi Atika. These are the views that they held. And those two views don't, they're not, they don't go against each other. That the person will come out of their grave and they will be on the surface of the Yawm al Mahshar. Because the Yawm al Mahshar is a part of the earth. فَإِذَا هُمْ And suddenly فَإِذَا هُمْ بِالسَّاهِرَةِ And suddenly they will be alert on the surface of this earth. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ بِالْوَأْدِ الْمُقَدَّسِ طُوَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says هَلْ أَتَاكَ Has it come to you? The way Allah wants to now go into the story of Nabiullah Musa is ala wajhi istifham. It's a question Allah asks you. Has it come to you, the story of Nabiullah Musa? Has it reached you, the story of Nabiullah Musa? Why did Allah make it a question? Why didn't He just tell us the story? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a question? In the Arabic language, this is called istifhamun littashwiq. It's called istifhamun littashwiq. It's a question. The intent behind it is to make you say, no, no, I haven't heard it. What is it? For you to desire, to want to know it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Hal is an istifham in the Arabic language. Hal has it come to you? Ataka, hadith Musa. Has it reached you? The story of Nabiullah Musa. Id, the time. Nadahu, he was called. Amma called him. Rabbuhu, his Lord called him. بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ طُوَى In the sacred valley of Tuwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He called out to Nabiullah Musa in what? In the sacred valley of Tuwa. Nabiullah Musa's story, inshaAllah ta'ala it will come to us in details in Surah Al-Taha and in Surah Al-Qasas and also Surah Al-Shu'ara mainly like in Surah Al-Taha Surah Al-Qasas, it will mention many of the story of Nabiullah Musa. Nabiullah Musa is the most mentioned prophet in the Qur'an. Who is the most mentioned prophet in the Qur'an? Nabiullah Musa. His name is the most mentioned and his story is the most mentioned. Are we all together brothers? Nabiullah Musa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to Nabiullah Muhammad, has it reached you, the story of Nabiullah Musa? Musa is from the five chosen prophets. صح? What are the five chosen prophets called? Ulul Az. Who is the first of them? Nabiullah in order, in order. Nabiullah Nuh. Ibrahim. Musa. 
Isa. Ya? Nabi Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those are the five chosen prophets. Nabi Allah Musa is the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Nabi Allah Musa. His name is Musa ibn Imran. Walidhalika, the scholars, they differed what is meant by بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ طُوَى الْمُقَدَّسِ طُوَى Especially طُوَى, what does طُوَى mean? There's a khilaf. There's four views what is meant by طُوَى. Four aqwal. The first قول is, it's a name of a valley. And now اسم الْوَادِ It's the name of the valley. And that's the view that we took, right? When I explained it right now, what did I say? It is the sacred valley of at -tua. That view of it being the name of a valley is the view taken by Ibn Abbas. It is also a view held by Mujahid. And it's also a view held by Qatada and Ibn Zayd. And this view it's the most apparent and it seems to be the strongest of all of them. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. The second is, the second view is, it's a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is a command from Allah to Nabiullah Musa for him to place his legs, his foot, sorry, on the earth. The second view is, أَمْرٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى لِمُوسَى Allah is commanding Nabi Allah Musa أَنْ يَطَأَ الْأَرْضَ بِقَدَمَيْهِ That he places his two foot on the... And we all know, what did Allah say in Surah Taha? What did Allah say to him? وَأَنَا اخْتَرْتُكَ فَاسْتَمِعْ لِمَا يُوحَى إِنَّنِي أَنَا اللَّهُ لَا إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدْنِي وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي إِنَّ السَّاعَةَ آتِيَةٌ أَكَادُ أُكْفِيهَا لِتُجْدَ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا تَسْعَى لا لا فخلعنا عليك take off your shoes إنك بالوادي إنك بالوادي المقدس طوى take off your two shoes so this is a command from Allah سبحانه وتعالى that's what the second view said the third view they said it's not a command but rather it is what موسى did طوى is not a command but it's what موسى did by placing his foot on the ground So the second view is attributed to Ibn Abbas and it's also attributed to Mujahid and it's attributed to Ikrima. The third qawl which I mentioned which is that Tuwa is a mazdar, it's not a fi'il amar which is that the, the thing that Musa stood up to do Ibn Abbas is attributed to it. He's the one who said this. Last but not least is the view Tuwa means twice. And that's the first time Nabi Lahi Musa was taken to the, uh, when he went to the, uh, the Ard, which is Muqaddas, and Musa took his shoes off and he spoke to Allah. That was the first time. And the second time Musa left his people with his brother Harun, those two times is Tuwa. That's what they said. That's the fourth view. The fourth view is attributed to Hassan al-Basri and Mujahid. Hal ataka has it reached you? Hadith Musa, the story of Nabi Allah Musa, Idnadahu, when he was called out by his Lord, Bilwadi, in the sacred valley of Tuwa. So we take, inshallah ta'ala, the first view. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to him? Idhab, Musa, go. Ila Fir'auna, go to Fir'aun. Innahu taga, Fir'aun has transgressed and he's exceeded his limits. Idhab, go, Musa. Ila Fir'auna, go to Fir'aun. إِنَّهُ أَيْ فِرْعَوْنَ فِرْعَوْنَ طَغَى He has transgressed. تَجَاوَزَ الْحَدْ He exceeded the limits in what? لكن فِي الْعُدْوَانِ وَالْتَكَبُّرِ In arrogance and in transgression. فِرْعَوْنَ is the name of the leaders of Egypt. Every leader who controlled Egypt was called what? فِرْعَوْنَ before like in Nabiullah Musa, the leadership 
was not held by the Fara'ina. Anyone who held it was called Malik, king. And this is Nabiullah Yusuf, uh, Nabiullah Ibrahim. Ibrahim, when he came to Egypt, the person he met was not called Fir'aun. And he didn't have that name. What was it called? The Malik. So Ibrahim, alayhi salatu salam. So you can see Egypt went through those two. The first one was Malik, the king. And the second one was Fara'ina. The scholars, they differed within themselves. Is the Fir'aun that raised Musa the same Fir'aun he was sent to? Scholars differed on that. The one who raised Musa and nurtured him, was it the same Fir'aun who later Musa was sent to? And from the Qur'an's context, if you look, it seems like the same, it's the same Fir'aun. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, أَلَمْ نُرَبِّكَ فِينَا وَلِيدًا وَلَبِثْتَ فِينَا مِنْ عُمُرِكَ سِنِينَ وَفَعَلْتَ فَعَلَتَكَ الَّتِي فَعَلْتَ were, were we not the ones who nurtured you and raised you? In Surah Al-Shu'ara, it's going to come to us in more details. So what it seems like is Fir'aun is the same individual. So Nabi Allah Musa was sent to Fir'aun. Idhab, go to Fir'aun. إِنَّهُ طَغَى Fir'aun has exceeded his limits. He has exceeded and transgressed. He has claimed that which wasn't his. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَقُلْ Say to him, هَلْ لَكَ إِلَىٰ أَن تَزَكَّى Would you be willing to purify yourself? This ayah teaches us what Musa was sent to say to Fir'aun. And I want everybody, if you weren't paying attention, to pay attention now. Musa is sent now. And he's sent to who? Fir'aun. By who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, Faqul. This is exactly what he was told to say. Faqul. Say Musa. You Musa say to who? To Fir'aun. This sentence. Hal laka ila an tazakka. Would you be willing to purify yourself? This, which means the statement of Musa, has a very powerful statement, a very powerful point in it. What did Musa be commanded to say? Hal. The word tazakka has been used here. The word tazakka, ikrimat said, it means la ilaha illallah. Tazkiyah means la ilaha illallah. Do you want to? Purify yourself. Meaning, do you want to come with La ilaha illallah? Ibn Zayd rahimahullah, he said La. It's a more general. Do you want to be a Muslim? And Ibn Zayd did something that we spoke about before, which is Dirasa to Kulliyat al Remember when we were speaking about the first lesson we had, how to study tafsir? We say you try to, you try to memorize each word in the Quran that has been used and it has one meaning. Remember we said that? Sometimes there's words in the, like the word qunut in the Quran. Whenever you find qunut in the Quran, what does it mean? Ata'a. Whenever you find the word sultan in the Quran, what does it mean? Hujja, proof. It's qa'ida muttarida, you just memorize it. This is called what? Dirasatu kulliyatul alfaz. And we said the best book to read in this regard was what? Husnul bayan fi nazmi mushtarakat al Quran written by Abdul Hadi Abdul Hadi Al Abiyari rahimahullah. We spoke about that before. Now pay attention here. Ibn, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam is being sent to Fir'aun. And he's being told to say to Fir'aun the following Do you want to be a Muslim? Do you want to come to La ilaha Allah? Then the first thing Musa was instructed was to call to what? Huh? What was he first commanded to call to? La ilaha illa tawheed. Teach this man La ilaha illallah. This is something that your da'wah starts with. And it's the last thing that you end your life with. Man kana akhiru kalamihi min ad dunya la ilaha illallah. Dakhal al jannah. The Prophet said, anyone. Who la ilaha illallah is his final statement, he will enter paradise. True or false? So the person is distinct, he's unique, he's known for that. Every opportunity he gets, he wants to talk about la ilaha illallah. 
the Anbiya and the Rusul. Imagine, brothers, from Nabiullah Musa Ibrahim Nuh's time, Nuh, Nuh, until Nabiullah Muhammad, one thing we know for sure they all had in common. Their salahs were different. Their fasting were different. Their zakat was different. Their hajj was different. Everything was different. The one thing they were all in the, together in was what? La ilaha illallah. No prophet came and said you can do trinity. No prophet said you can worship other than Allah. And then another one came and he abrogated that ruling. No. All of them. Milladun Nuh alayhi salatu wa Ila Nabiullah Muhammad. They all had this in common. Are you with me brothers? That's powerful. That's very powerful because it shows you the power and the weight of La ilaha illallah. Another thing that Ibn al-Qayyim, a fa'idah I came across from Ibn al-Qayyim. Ibn al-Qayyim has a kitab called At-Tibyanu fi Aqsam al-Qur'an. Ibn al-Qayyim sat on this verse and he brought seven fa'idah out. Unprecedented, powerful points. He analyzes the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Nabi Allah Musa to go. He says, these benefits that you need to write. فَقُلْ Say to him, هَلْ لَكَ إِلَىٰ أَنْتَ زَكَىٰ He said the first benefit Ibn al-Qayyim mentions is the way that the statement was put forward by Musa to Fir'aun was in a what? مخرج العرض He says إخراج الكلام The statement came from Nabi Allah Musa to Fir'aun in a presentation. What does that mean? He said to him فَهَلْ فَقُلْ هَلْ لَكَ Isn't it for you? Presenting it for him. Are you willing? He's presenting the idea to him. He's not saying, do tazkiyah to your nafs. He's not commanding him. He's not prohibiting him. He's only presenting the idea to him. وَلَمْ يَخْرُجْ مَخْرَجَ الْأَمْرِ وَالْإِلْزَامِ And Nabi Allah Musa was not commanded to use what? He, was told, he wasn't told to say, do this. Stay away from this. He didn't use that method. He used a method in the Arabic language which is Arab. Just like, he's, this is in Qayyim's kalam, just like Ibrahim when he came to the idols, what did he say to them? أَلَا تَأْكُلُونَ Are you guys not going to eat? All of them they know that that doesn't, it won't work. Allah knows that Fir'aun won't take it. And Allah knows Fir'aun won't accept it. But Allah knows. But the method doesn't change because you know the person won't listen. Just because you know that the person won't listen, that doesn't mean you change the method, you need to give your da'wah. Are you with me? The acceptance and the rejection of the da'wah is not upon you. That's not your job. And whenever the Prophet ﷺ became concerned with people accepting the truth, Allah will say to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسَيْطِرْ إِنَّمَا عَلَيْكَ الْبَلَاغِ Upon you is to convey the message. Whether the people accept it or reject it, that's nothing to do with you. Whether your group, it grows or it reduces, that's nothing to do with you. Just convey the message. And then Nabi Allah Musa was being taught the way to give da'wah. And the way he needs to call the people. The way that you speak has to be very good. But pay attention, brothers. The truth has to be said. But it has to be said in a good way. Nowadays, you find people confl conflate two things. And they don't know how to distinguish one from the other. And that is good manners and concealing the truth. They think concealing the truth. You see a person drinking with their left hands. They think it's good manners not to tell him. Are you with me? A person is drinking with his left hand. You can see him drinking with his left hand. You, you're silent about it. Why? Because you believe it's good manners. That's not good manners. Good manners is what? My beloved brother, may Allah elevate your status. I think you forgot. I know you wouldn't do something like this. I think it was forget, out of forgetfulness. If you can just drink with your right hand and you say it like that, that's what Islam wants from you. Are you with me, brothers? Concealing the truth is not good manners. That's why Nabi Allah Musa was told to say La ilaha illallah to Fir'aun. The truth is not going to be concealed. But the way you're going to say it, make sure it's in a good way. And so Nabi Allah Musa went and he did that. The second thing is, what did he say? 
The second benefit Ibn al-Qayyim brings out is what? Ila an tazakka. Are you willing to purify yourself? He did not say for me to purify you. Ila an tazakka to purify yourself. Why? Because the leader doesn't want anyone but to do anything for him. The leader believes he does things for himself. صح? This is Fir'aun, he's arrogant. So what's befitting for him? To be said to him that you're going to purify yourself. This is what Ibn al-Qayyim says. Also the fourth benefit he brings out is وَأَهْدِيَكَ And I will guide you. I will take you. The word أَهْدِيَكَ means أَيْ أَدُلُّكَ I will show you. I'll take you by the hand and I will show you. Ibn al-Qayyim said there's a very powerful point in this. It's like you say to somebody, I'm going to take you to a land of gold and diamonds and you, you can take whatever you want. It's better than saying, I'm going to bring you guidance. I'm going to take you where it is and you will take whatever you want. No one's going to restrict you for what you can take. Because if you bring it, you're going to bring a restricted amount. Also the ayah says, إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ to your Lord. Where is Nabi Allah Musa trying to take Fir'aun to? And where is he trying to guide him to, brothers? إِلَىٰ who? إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ your Lord. And this is very, very powerful because many of the times we forget that what we have to do as people who are giving da'wah is to Allah, not to our organization, not our masjid, and not ourselves. I'm calling to Allah. The ghaya of da'wah, the ultimate goal of da'wah is for people to be called to Allah. Just because the people have accepted that message from you, because you're calling the people to Allah, and you're not calling the people to yourselves, that's why some prophets, they came and they didn't have much followers. Rather, a prophet will come the day of judgment, وَلَيْسَ مَعْهُ أَحَدٌ يَأْتِي نَبِيٌ وَلَيْسَ مَعْهُ أَحَدٌ Some prophets are going to come the day of judgment and no one's with them. They're by themselves. Why? Because they don't care whether the people follow them or whether the people like them or whether they... their goal was who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is who they were connecting the people to. So when you're calling the people, you're calling to who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ Your Lord is what I'm going to call you to. When you say that to a person, I'm calling to Allah, somebody who you and I are a slave for, he's both of our masters. This makes a person like Fir'aun not feel like Musa is the one who's calling himself to everybody. Because then he would see Musa as a what? A competition, somebody wants to stay. But Musa is saying, the matter is not me. I'm calling to Allah. You can go directly to Allah. As, uh, the way I go to him, subhanahu and this is the difference between the people whose da'wah is not calling to Allah. For example, a Sufi person will call you to who? He's Shaykh and he's, you have to go through him to go to Allah. That doesn't exist in Islam. Who do you go to? Directly to he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number six, he says, Fatakhsha. Fatakhsha means once the guidance has come to you, and you have come to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you've been guided to him. You're going to attain khashya. And this is the reality of a person whose knowledge of Allah has come to, uh, knowledge of Allah has come to them. Wallah, if you know Allah, your fear of him and your khashya of him increases. You can't do what normal people will do. You are scared of him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Last but not least, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used halaka. Is it for you? And Ibn al Qayyim said that the usage of the word halaka is, and all the things that he mentioned after it, is something a person whose rationally mind, mind is there will not reject. In other words, the only answer that would be open for Fir'aun. There's a Toyota SG52, I think, AEE, -E, Amma, 3252, uh, I think, now. 
if you can move your car, inshallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَأَهْدِيَكَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ And I guide you to your Lord, so you, be, so you would fear him. فَأَرَاهُ And he showed him, آيَةَ الْكُبْرَىٰ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he showed him, آيَةَ الْكُبْرَىٰ The greatest sign. The word فَأَرَاهُ in the Arabic language, it means, it means فَأَظْهَرَهُ Allah tabarak wa ta'ala made it apparent. Nabiullahi Musa to Fir'aun. So he came and he gave him a hujjah and a proof. He spoke to him. He asked him this question. When Fir'aun didn't want to accept it, Nabiullahi Musa gave signs now for him to accept it now. Something, okay, you want to see it? Okay, here it is. Sometimes Muslims who are giving da'wah, it seems to them that the Quran is not enough. So they go for signs, the world, this, that. Look, wow, look at this video, YouTube video. And they think that if they bring this to the kuffar, they're going to accept it. They will never accept it. The person who Allah wants to guide, if the Quran is not able to guide you, nothing else is going to guide you. The prophets, when their qawm came to them and they requested from them, their umam, their qawm came to them, and they said to them, okay, do this for us. It was at a point when they were being stubborn. Every sign that came, they were making it even more harder on themselves. It wasn't because they acknowledged the truth. Sometimes some Muslim will come up to you and say to you, I want an ayah in the Quran that clearly says this and I'll stop it. No, you're not. The truth is you're not going to. It's a hujjah he wants to use to justify him not accepting it. So, why don't you want to take the hadith? Why do you want to take the ijma' of the ummah is mun'aqid on this mas'ala? Why do you want an ayah like this, clear like this? Huh? It's an indirect way of saying, I'm not going to. I'm not going to take it. فَأَرَاهُ الْآيَةَ الْكُبْرَىٰ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made apparent Nabi Allah Musa alayhi salatu wasalam to Fir'aun ayat al-kubra. The word here that's used is ayah. Ayah is a mufrad, it's a singular. But we know Nabi Allah Musa he was what? Was he only given one ayah? How many ayahs was he given? Yeah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tis'a ayat. Allah gave Nabi Allah Musa nine ayats, nine signs in the Quran. But the biggest two signs that Nabi Allah Musa came with and he did was what? فَأَلْقَى عَصَاهُ فَإِذَا هِيَ ثُعْبَانٌ مُّبِينٌ وَنَزَعَ يَدَهُ فَإِذَا هِيَ بَيْضَاءُ لِلنَّاظِرِينَ صح? These were the two ayahs the ayahs referring to. Even the mufrad here is referring to the jins. It's not talking about the actual signs in and within itself. Are you with me? Meaning, the if mufrad here is the jins, which is this ayah. The stick and the hand of Nabi Allah Musa are both signs. So the mufrad is used for that reason. But Musa used two things in front of him. Which is, it, what, did, what did he do? Musa threw his stick. فَإِذَا هِيَ ثُعْبَانٌ مُبِينٌ It was a, a large snake. وَنَزَعَ يَدَهُ He took his hand out of his pocket. فَإِذَا هِيَ بَيْضَاءُ لِلنَّاظِرِينَ It was shining. The person couldn't look at it. These were two signs that Musa was given to him. Fir'aun was meant to what? What was he meant to do here? First of all, he was spoken to in a very good manner. He rejected it. And then what was he told after that? Okay, you seeing is believing, huh? This is an atheist statement. Those who say seeing is believing, this is an athe atheistic statement. It's a kufr statement. We believe so many things we don't see. So he says to you, seeing is believing. It was done for him. Maybe Allah Musa took his hand out. He brought the uh, stick for him. What did Fir'aun do? Fir'aun used a tactic that the followers of Fir'aun till today they use. Fir'aun has, many people have taken this from him. Fir'aun turned towards the people as though he's a guider. What did he say to them? This man wants to do what? يُرِيدُ أَنْ يُخْرِجَكُمْ مِنْ أَرَضِكُمْ بِسِحْرِهِ This man wants to take you out of this city with you. He's using emotions. He wants to take you out of your land with what? He's magic. He turned this the ayah into what? Sihir. This would sell to the people, it would sell. 
it will sell to the people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, فَكَذَّبَ Musa, two things were done for him. Pay attention here. Pay attention. Two things were done for Fir'aun. Fir'aun was spoken to in the best way that a person can be spoken to. <coughs> Second thing was, two great signs were shown to him right in front of his face. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, فَكَذَّبَ وَعَصَى Fir'aun denied and he disobeyed. This was the natija, this was the result of what Fir'aun came with in response to what Musa came with. So the first thing he did was what? He disbelieved and he what? He disobeyed, that's one. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ثُمَّ أَدْبَرَ يَسْعَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, then he turned his back striving. When he refused, he denied, he disobeyed, Fir'aun strove to something. Ah. Instead of accepting, humbling himself, taking the statements of Nabi Allah Musa, following and submitting, he rejected, he turned away from it, and then he added onto it by doing what? Yas'a. Yas'a here means what? He strove fasad on this earth. He, he, worked, he worked towards corruption. And this is what Allah said in the Quran. وَإِذَا تَوَلَّى سَعَى فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُفْسِدَ فِيهَا وَيُهْلِكَ الْحَرْثَ وَالنَّسِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَسَادِ They turn away from you and they bring about corruption on this earth. So Fir'aun, what did he do? He turned away. And he turned towards bringing about corruption onto this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us what, what, what kind of corruption he came with. فَحَشَرَ فَنَادَى This is the way he brought the corruption. He brought all of his magicians together. فَحَشَرَ معنى ما معنى فَحَشَرَ He gathered his people. His people here are his army. He brought them together. Those who were with him and those who saw eye to eye with him. He brought them together. وَنَادَى And he, and he screamed. What did he say? أنا ربكم الأعلى. He brought them all together. And then he said to them, I am the greatest supreme Lord there is. Fir'aun, now he claims this. Why is he saying this right now? Raddun lima ja'a bihi Musa. He's refuting what Nabi Allah Musa came with. The da'wah Nabi Allah Musa came with. 